Welcome to this Blackfoot Mayoral Forum. I'm Nate Eaton with EastIdahoNews.com. Joined tonight with Mayor Mark Carroll and Craig Stewart, both running for the Blackfoot Mayor's Office. Of course, you may be wondering, why are we holding this forum after the election? Well, earlier this month, neither candidate received 50% of the vote plus one, which is required to be elected as mayor, so there is a runoff election, and that election will happen on November 30th. So both candidates have agreed to be with us tonight. We do want to acknowledge our sponsor. This is being brought to you tonight by Bingham Healthcare, along with IE Productions and EastIdahoNews.com. We uh, want to explain the rules to you and then we will get going with this debate. The majority of the questions tonight came from you, people living in Blackfoot and the surrounding areas, and we're going to touch on as many topics as we can. Each candidate will have one minute for an opening statement. They will be followed by questions and they have two minutes to respond to those questions. Uh, most of the questions are for both candidates, the same question. There are some though that are specific for each of the candidates. If the opponent wants to respond to those particular questions, they have 30 seconds to respond. And then at the end, each candidate will get one minute for a closing statement. So they know the topics, they do not know the questions and we're going to jump right in and get going. We'll have our opening statements. Mayor Carroll, why don't we start with you, followed by Mr. Stewart. Thank you, Nate. My name is Mark Carroll. I have had the privilege of serving as mayor of the city of Blackfoot for four years, and I'm running for re-election. My family and I moved to Blackfoot 45 years ago. I've been married for 53 years to the same woman, I don't know if that's a testament to my ability to stay married and have integrity, but it could also be that my wife trained me to be the husband she wanted. We have three daughters, three married daughters. They and their families all live in Blackfoot. Seven grandchildren, two great-grandchildren. Serving the community has been in my blood for about 43 of those 45 years. I've served in a number of different capacities from youth sports to, I guess I'm done. All right. Thank, thank you. you, Mayor Carroll. Mr. Stewart. Hi, I'm Craig Stewart, as you all know. I am excited to be in this position to run for mayor. I think we need some changes, and I'm not going to go down everything about me. I know most of you people know I'm married. We have 10 children. We have 26 grandchildren. And, and from there, I, I want to thank Bing Memorial as, as well for putting this on here at Eastern Idaho News. One thing I do want to say is, oh, say what is truth. That is something that's embedded in my soul. Um, we're gathered here together on YouTube and Facebook and, and wherever else. And I appreciate those that are viewing to see what we're doing. Have you ever been into a dark room and wondered, I don't need to turn the light on. And yet you said, turn the light on. And said, no, I don't need to turn the light on. The toes are saying, turn the light on. I don't want this to happen again. Uh, so I think that we are looking for light and knowledge here tonight. And I appreciate each one of you for your concern and for the demands that you have uh, from the mayor and from the city. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Our first area of discussion tonight will be economic development. This is a question for both of you, but Mr. Stewart, we will ask you to answer first. Recent U.S. Census data shows growth in Blackfoot is non-existent. One report even says that it's one of two one of just two medium-sized city in the entire state that has experienced a decrease in growth. Other, other eastern Idaho cities are uh, booming. Many have seen growth between 5 and 10 percent. Why do you think this is? Mr. Stewart, you have two minutes. That's a good question. Thanks, Nate. Um, I did some statistics, looked at some statistics. Density has a lot to do with it. I look at Chubbuck, and they're the same size as our city, 5.9 miles, I believe, square miles. And yet their growth in the last 10 years has been about 14% higher than ours. There's been just a few of those 10 years that ours is, is not on the upward swing, which was back, uh, I believe, about 2015. 
Um, we have no recreation. Uh, the mayor closed down the pool. Uh, poor infrastructure, which includes we don't have any fiber outside the city, and that's important. We're also the third highest in taxes in the state, which, you know, I'm not going to blame it on the mayor. I know this has been happening a lot, but we need to make some changes there, and, and it doesn't seem like they're happening. All right. Um, mayor Carroll, your response. Why do you think it is that Blackfoot is not growing? I don't know where people are getting those numbers, but the U.S. Not, census, the U.S. census is where I got my numbers. The 2010 population for Blackfoot was 11,899 people. The 2020 census is 12,346. That's a growth of 447. Anybody who travels in Blackfoot knows it's a lot busier today than it was three to five, ten years ago. Traffic is terrible. We've had a lot of growth, particularly in the last couple of years. This last year, we've had $20 million worth of new construction. That's residential and commercial. The city of Blackfoot has gone through tremendous change in the last four years, particularly with regard to permitting, and the number of houses that are being built, the realtor board told us two years ago that they only had something like 11 houses up for sale. That's for sale or for rent. We currently have 250 new doors under construction. We have another 1,500 where developers have been talking to us about coming into Blackfoot. They've already purchased the ground. We have two really exciting new businesses coming to town. I don't mean to sound cryptic, but we're not allowed to discuss that right now. I know one piece of property is due to close on December 6th. And that will be a real boon to the city of Blackfoot. Thank you. All right. Sounds like there's some news there that might be made here in the next uh, few weeks or so. Uh, Mayor, we'll start with you on this question. This is also one for both of you. You mentioned the growth, uh, the construction, the businesses that are coming. What is your plan to attract more business, to grow more and create more development in the city limits? Two minutes. Four years ago, we put together something called the Black Pack. That is a folder that's got a number of different documents in it to help new businesses understand the city of Blackfoot, but also understand different grants, different loan opportunities, should they wish to avail themselves of that. A lot of good information. I think we passed out something like 70 of those in the last two years. We don't get everybody who approaches us because they're usually looking at three or four different sites. Construction in Blackfoot is easier to accomplish than it is in any of our surrounding communities. And that isn't me saying it. We're getting it from these construction companies. They say it's easier to deal in Blackfoot. It's cheaper to hook up to utilities. And they like dealing with the city employees. We know there's a lot more going on. We just opened up. The city uh, has been working with Costa Vida. They just opened this last Monday. We have a new Mexican restaurant, Los Gal Galavanas. I had lunch there the other day, outstanding food. As I said, we've got two other manufacturing businesses. That's what we really need in Blackfoot. We're working on infrastructure needs for those businesses right now. Thank you. All right, Mr. Stewart, your plan to bring more businesses, more growth to the city. Well, first of all, let me make a comment on what the mayor said, that uh, builders are loving to work in the city and with the city. 
That's not true. We don't even have a building inspector. That's a sad thing. We have to go to, we have a, Idaho State is hired to do that. The contractors, they are frustrated to beat the path. They, they, they want a building inspector, and I'm going to tell you why. I've been a contractor. We need a building inspector so they can get out right away. They don't want to wait two days and take their crew off site and go start another job somewhere or finish another job somewhere. They need a building inspector. We need that, first of all. Uh, we need to create a recreation committee. Um, it's, it's important that we work with the, the, the county and private enterprises for funding. That's how we can make uh, recreation something that you can look into and want to live here in Blackfoot. We need to hire an economic developer, period, and rejoin Ready. That's something that I don't know why the mayor got rid of Ready. Ready is, is, is what we call regional economic development for eastern Idaho. We rely on them for assistance, for development, and for block grants. We haven't had a block grant, I believe, for 20 years. We need to, we need to grab those things and use them, especially now. The current president of the United States has actually uh, signed in a, a million or a trillion dollar infrastructure. We need to grab it as we can, have, as we can get it. We need to streamline and, and modernize business regulations, which will, no doubt, it's going to step step forward in determining if their economic success is, and competitive, competitiveness is going to happen. That's very important. We need to reach out to business leaders like Bingham Memorial, like Spudnik, like um, the other big cities or the other big towns, Basic American, American, uh, and for other ideas. Thank you, Mayor. Do you wish to respond and, and address the issue of not having a, a building inspector in the city? It's true that we do not have a building inspector on staff. We hired the building inspector based on the value of the permits that are issued each month. We get plumbing, electrical, mechanical, and H&V inspection for that same money. Whatever money we collect in permits, we pay the State of Idaho Division of Building Services 60% of that value. If we hire a building inspector, it's going to cost us about $120,000. We can't afford that. There's not money in permits to be able to allow that. Thank you. All right, let's move from economic development into infrastructure. Of course, the railroad crossing is likely the hottest topic regarding infrastructure in the city. Uh, it's been talked about for years and years. Mayor Carroll, I'm sure you've been asked this before, uh, and I'm going to start with you for this round of questions. Two minutes. What is your position regarding a railroad overpass, and what will be done over the next four years if you are reelected? I live on the east side. I'm as frustrated as anybody else. But honestly, if somebody gave the city $12 million to go build an underpass or overpass, I think we'd probably decide to use it on other infrastructure needs. Having said that, though, I had a meeting with Representative Mike Simpson about three months ago. He got very excited when we started talking about the underpass or overpass. And he said, I think we can earmark a million and a half to $2 million for Blackfoot. We've already started on the application. They won't have the call for the applications until late January. But the day we get the call, we're sending in our request. That $2 million, if that's how much we get, will allow for the analysis of five different crossings that we've identified we will put together a citizen committee to help decide which one we think would be best. And then we can turn the engineers loose on putting together the package. Once you have a package that's ready to go out for bid, it's a lot easier to get grant money to, to fund the project. Right now, we're guessing it's going to be about $12 million total. We've looked at other options, for example, putting in an auxiliary, an auxiliary fire station 
on the east side of town, and the city bought the, the property about five years ago. But we're not ready to pull the trigger on that until we see what's going to happen with this grant from, or uh, the funding money from Representative Simpson. And you said you should hear on that in January? That's when we will submit the paperwork. Okay. Uh, Mr. Stewart, your solution, uh, if you're elected mayor, to, to deal with this overpass issue, overpass underpass issue? Well, first of all, <clears throat> let's be clear. It's if you get the $12 million. And I know Mike Simpson, and I know his website states specifically he does not support earmarks. So I hope mayor is telling the truth on this one. Um, the mayor brought this up just last month or the last couple of months, and I'm wondering why. Why is it, why is it coming up now? Well, I'll let you answer that. Um, I do support this. My constant concern about these things are how much of the city residents are going to have to pay. It's going to, it's going to come out of a budget. We're going to have to put some money forward. Taxpayers are probably going to be liable for some of this. But I do support it if we can figure out a way to make it so that the taxpayers don't have to come out of money, uh, pocket money. I visited with Jim Thomas for a few hours last week, and he wants to do an underpass. He claims that it's a lot uh, more economical to do an underpass. I don't know that, but I'm sure the study will inform us, so I'm, I'm good with that. Uh, the mayor and the current administration haven't proven that they can work in, in the county. I don't know how they're going to work with the railroad. I know people at the railroad. I've had discussions with people at the railroad. Why would we think that we could communicate with the railroad? I really have my doubts with the current leadership. Thank you. Uh, mayor, he, he mentioned your name. Do you wish to respond? I am doing everything I can to keep this campaign on the high road. I'm not going to accuse any challenger, I've never done it before, of not speaking truth or even not knowing what I'm talking about or what the challenger is talking about. I've been doing this now for four years. Yes, I've dealt with the railroad. They are not easy to deal with. They have told us if we can get a project together and the funding together, they can put as much as 10% into the project. And that is the truth. Okay. Uh, Mr. Stewart, this question, again, for both of you. We'll start with you, though, Mr. Stewart. What is your plan to upgrade existing infrastructure such as sewer and water should there be future growth? Without fixing the current infrastructure or, or start fixing it, um, it's damning to us. It's going to destroy our city even worse than, than, than where we're at right now. Our streets are in terrible position. Our sewers, as we all know, it's the talk of the city. Um, it's hard to grow to be financially responsible without building our infrastructure. That's, that's a, a big answer. We need to hire an economic developer, in my opinion, and rejoin Red Eye, or Ready, I can't remember how it's pronounced, which is, is uh, we rely on them for assistance in, in grants, in block grants. I just don't understand why we haven't used those in 20 years. It's the smart and the best way to, uh, to accelerate financial and, and infrastructure. Um, we haven't tried one for 20 years, so I just want to know why we haven't used them. I just, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Carroll, your plan to address future growth concerning infrastructure like sewer and water. Infrastructure takes plans. Transportation plans, streets and roadways. Water rights. Riverton Road sewer replacement. Water facilities planning. Sewer department and stormwater upgrades. You don't get grants, Mr. Stewart, until 
you have an engineering plan. It's taken us two years to get these documents ready. I've said before, it took me two years to understand the mayor's responsibilities. Each of the three challengers said, won't take me any two years to figure it out. That's baloney. There's 14 departments who deal with a number of different regulatory agencies. You have to understand how that works. We have a number of grants working right now. We have sewer projects, we have water projects. We're going to rebuild the West Street Bridge. That funding, that's about $12 million in grant funding. Part of it is a block grant. I don't know where you get that we haven't had a block grant in 20 years. We have had block grants and a number of other grants. I'm very judicious though in selecting which grants we use because every grant comes with strings and we have to be careful of those. The pool which you mentioned was built on a land and water conservation grant back in the early 70s. We're still living with those strings even though we've not operated the pool in two years. Thank you. All right, Mr. Stewart, do you wish to respond? Yes. It won't take me two years to figure this out, and I know the mayor just mentioned that it will. The problem is we need to surround ourselves. I need to surround myself with people that know things that I don't know. Does that take five people? Does it take ten? Whatever it takes so we can learn these things. I don't stand up here and claim that I know everything, which I don't, but I do know that I can get people around me and we can talk and figure it out. I have a reputation for that. If you ask anybody that knows me, you will hear that. All right, you both have mentioned the pool and more questions were received regarding recreational activities than any other topic. So it is something that people obviously care about in Blackfoot. Uh, a concerned mother wrote, my kids don't play baseball and soccer, but having them stay active is important to me. When the pool shut down, you said the city, Mayor Carroll, would consider other recreational opportunities beyond existing sports, uh, club sports. So, Mayor, the question for you, what have you done over the past three years in helping provide rec activities for kids, and what will you do over the next four years if reelected? That's a really interesting question. Uh, I have spent the majority of my volunteer time in youth sports. I have taught soccer clinics all over the Pacific Northwest. I've been to cities where they eliminated something like Little League Baseball or American Youth Soccer and took responsibility under the, the wing of the city. I know Shelley has done that, and they've had medium success on it. Everybody I talk to says it works best if you have a volunteer organization that runs the youth activity. Jazz basketball, Little League baseball, American youth soccer, uh, BYSA soccer in Blackfoot. I don't think we want to increase the taxes to take responsibility into the city to run youth sports. I do believe it's the responsibility of the city to provide the fields that they play on. We provide soccer fields. We provide baseball fields. We help with softball. As a matter of fact, they're starting to play softball on our little league fields. We have a golf course. Yes, we did eliminate the pool because it was costing too much money. The pool cost $450,000 a year. The community decided not to fund the bond, which would have rebuilt the pool. We're told that the most expensive facility 
for a city to maintain is an indoor swimming pool. The second most expensive facility is an outdoor swimming pool. A lot of money tied up there. So just so I'm clear, Mayor, um, do you continue to, to continue on with what you've done with sports programs should you be reelected? Re do you plan to make any changes as far as providing anything for this mother who says her kids don't play soccer or baseball, any of the ball sports? My dream was to turn the indoor swimming pool, the dome, into a rec center. But the building is so far gone, it'll take about a million and a half to build it to build it back to where it's a safe facility. Excuse me, a safe facility. <clears throat> Pardon me. Okay, Mr. Stewart, uh, your plans for providing recreational opportunities for this mother, for other families in Blackfoot. Well, first of all, I want to make a comment about the baseball fields. They're in terrible shape, and I don't know why. Uh, let's keep our kids out of trouble like recently, like the eggs that have been thrown at cars. Uh, we, need, we need to do something and create a recreation for our, for our people here in this city. I am passionate about recreation. Um, I think we need to create a committee and explore our options for that. We need to use county and private funds. I know private enterprise people that are interested in having a city here or a recreation facility here. And I'm not thinking about using the pool. Um, the mayor turned down the proposal, I believe, last year for the rec, a rec center um, because it would be on county property. What difference does it make to me? That's a question that I'd like to find out. Different recreation options, options will bring new businesses and, and residents here, and that's important. I'm not in favor to duplicate duplicate what's going on in gymnasiums that are such as rise fitness and and so forth they still will thrive on my plan but what about a, what about the pool i think it's an issue i think pickleball and tennis courts are an issue i think indoor walking track that's something that we could do um simulated golf how about that my sister has one in her basement how awesome is that there's only two places in the state that i know of that have simulated golf that could be in a rec center Let's get some ideas. I know that we can make this happen, but I need your help. Mayor, do you wish to respond about the rec center? I guess I would like to ask Mr. Stewart, what county property did I turn down? Over on uh, Airport Road. East Airport Road. That's what I was told. I'm sorry, I still don't know what you're talking about. Well, the East Airport Road's not very long, so there's not very many fields there, so it's it's right off Highland Drive. I would, I would guess, I think it's east of Highland Drive. But what Drive. facility? Rec Center. So, Mayor, you're saying you did not turn down any rec center on county I, property? I have had um, two different conversations with... Uh, four different young men who approached the city on the city funding the building of a rec center like the MEC in Pocatello. We toured the MEC uh, back in early 2020, about 15 people. We'd love to have that in Blackfoot. It would be a gorgeous facility for us. But we've got to get the $6 million to build it. I don't know what it would cost today. Um, I don't know that I turned them down as much as they didn't have the funding. They wanted the city to build it, and they would run it. I don't know if that's what you're talking about, but they didn't even have a piece of ground. Now, if you got that information from the rec director with the county, I've never had any conversation with him or anybody at the county about that. Nobody has approached me with an idea on a specific piece of property. And that's the truth. Okay. 
Uh, earlier we spoke a little bit about the railroad crossing, and one of you mentioned uh, a potential firehouse on one side of the tracks versus the other. We're going to uh, switch into the topic of emergency services. Mr. Stewart, we're going to start with you. A resident submitted this question. It's been noted in other forums that you've made a suggestion to eliminate the City of Blackfoot Police Department and contract with the Bingham County Sheriff's Office to provide emergency services in the city. Can you clarify that statement and provide an outline as to what you're suggesting and how you would implement this? Two minutes. Yes, thank you, Rhett, for asking me that question. Let me clarify that. I was misquoted. I never, ever made a statement about contracting the, the police department to the county. Never have I ever made that, mis that statement. However, a question was brought up at a forum, I believe, about the fire department becoming a volunteer fire department. And I believe uh, the city of Ammon was referenced. My answer was, if the community wanted to talk about it, I would be willing to talk about it. But I, I do not want an all-volunteer fire department. And I said nothing, period, nothing about combining the two police services. So let me be clear. Let me be clear on this. I believe both entities are doing a wonderful job. I don't have any complaints whatsoever. From what I know, I think they're doing a great job. So that's totally false. I think they protect our community, and that's really what matters. All right. Uh, Mayor Carroll, this question's for you. It's no secret that the relationship between the city and county regarding emergency services has been rocky even before your administration. What have you done to improve this relationship? What is your plan moving forward? When I first came into office, I was surprised to find that there was one ledger account that was $438,000 in the red. And it turned out that was an accumulation over a number of years of the shortfall in the county budget to operate the ambulance service. A lot of people don't know, but if you look at your tax bill, in the city, you've got an ambulance service levy. That money goes directly to the county, to the county commissioners. Way back decades ago, they decided to hire the city of Blackfoot to provide ambulance services within the city. County residents, county residents also pay an ambulance levy. So the city of Blackfoot Fire Department operates the ambulance service all throughout the county area except in the north. We go out as far as, uh, well, close to Aberdeen. Um, I forget how many square miles it covers, but it, it's a lot. We just recently signed a new agreement with the county. And frankly, it took about a year to negotiate that agreement. But it's a good agreement for both sides. It's in effect now. We do talk. There are sometimes some uh, fairly frank discussions with, between us, but we've got a good agreement now, and we're happy with it. As far as contracting out, I am absolutely opposed to that. I'm very proud of the fact that both the IAFF, the Firefighter and EMT Union, have endorsed my candidacy, as, has, as have the... Uh, fraternal order of police. Follow-up question for both of you, starting with you, Mayor. What, what can be done over the next four years to continue to improve the relationship between the county and the city, or do you think that it's fine where it's at? I don't think any relationship is ever really fine where it's at. You can always improve on it. You need discussion. Both sides need to be able to sit down and talk. And I think that between the county commissioners and the mayor and the city council, that is what we're committed to do. But we're all really busy, and we don't always have time to do that. 
the county and the city off, operate on very thin budgets. Everybody's trying to manage, uh, manage their budget as best they can. We'll continue doing that. We'll continue talking. Mr. Stewart. There's a big communication gap, in my opinion, and a lot of other people's opinion, with the city and the county. It's been going on for quite some time. We can't get anything done. There are things that have been said that are sketchy. They are incorrect. They are wrong. And we need to have some clarity with, with the county. The county is willing to work with us. It's been said that the county, the far right wing of Groveland, is financing my campaign. That's not true. We live in Bingham County. The citizens here in Blackfoot, we live in Bingham County. We need to get along. We need to come to the table, not 30 times, we need to come to the table a few times and make some decisions that will work with both the city and county. It's not happening. There's been a struggle beyond anything that I can even comprehend. It makes no sense to me. So why can't we come to some agreement? We're in the same county. Um, I know I can do this. I know I can bring people together. I know the county and the city can work together. It is important that we work together. Everything relies on that. We don't have the money in the city to do everything that we want to do. The county can be helpful. We can help one another. That's what life's about, actually. Life's about helping each other. Not about me, not about me, not about me. It's about each other, and I know I can make that happen. All right, speaking of the county, let's talk about annexation and taxes. Mr. Stewart, we'll start with you on this question, followed by Mayor Carroll. What is your position regarding annexation uh, west of the city? That's a great question. I know the city needs money because we don't have any money. I don't know how many cities in the country have money because we're always trying to put out a fire somewhere because we didn't plan. And I'm not just saying this current uh, mayor didn't plan. It's not just his fault. It's, it's, it's many mayors' fault. We don't plan. Blackfoot needs to grow. But one thing it doesn't need to have is forced, reckless annexation. It's not ethical. There's four states, I believe, in the country that, that lets you force annex. I don't believe it's right. It needs to be done cooperatively. That's important. That's another thing about working together. We should only annex incrementally and not land grab. I'm not a land grabber. I don't think it's right. I think if we flip the, the coin, the, the other people would say the same thing. Why would we bring more into the city if we can't even take care of our streets and sidewalks and our sewers that we have. Why do we bring more in? Well, by annexing the west side, basic Americans even talked about leaving and going to Rexburg. Now, that would be a tragedy for Blackfoot. That's a family-owned business out there. It's not a corporation. They don't have to satisfy shareholders. They have to satisfy themselves, the family that owns it. And they won't have anything to do with paying higher taxes. Idaho is, I already mentioned that, Idaho is only four states, one of four states. So I think that annexation incrementally, it's important, and I know that the county would be more than happy to do that. But we need to fix what we have. And we can't fix by going out and grabbing, paving more streets. Streets are liabilities. They're liabilities to us. At some point, it's a liability. And that's the truth. Mayor Carroll, your response? Two minutes. Annexation is a huge topic. Um, city citizens are also county citizens. County citizens are not city citizens. There's a reason why people build just outside a city. That's so they can take advantage 
of services and shopping and restaurants that are inside the city. That's not fair. It's been estimated we have as many as 40,000 people who come in and out of the city of Blackfoot every day. That's wear and tear on the streets, the streets that everybody's concerned about. That's wear and tear on other infrastructure. Annexation is a way to build the tax base across a broad spectrum. 60% of the people who come into Blackfoot to, to use soccer fields, baseball fields, the airport, when the swimming pool was in operation. And we can show that by registrations. Yep. They pay the same fees that city citizens pay. Over the years, it's been tried to increase fees to people who do not live within the city, but it's never worked. We've never found a way to make that work. So annexation, that's what all the other cities do. Mr. Stewart has mentioned Ammon and Chubbuck. They do annex. We don't. They've got a much higher valuation base than the city of Blackfoot. They're more successful. Mayor Carroll, a follow-up. Some have suggest suggested that the city's bid to buy the old non parel building outside of the limits, city limits was an underhanded position for the city to argue for annexation. Uh, I'd love to hear your response to that. And also, how much money did the city lose in the failed building acquisition? I did put that on a post on my mayor page. I laid out all of the uh, parts of the, the potential deal. I'll go back and cover it again as quickly as I can, but an owner of Nonpareil approached one of our council members and said they would make a good deal to the city. We went out and looked at it with the idea of co-locating the police department and city hall. We currently pay the county $300,000 a year for the uh, city police to live at the courthouse. That's a lot of money. We could cut that budget significantly by co-locating in our own building. For different reasons, I was not particularly in favor of it, but we went ahead and did our due diligence. The initial discussions about this were held in executive session. That's completely in compliance with state code. If the city is going to entertain the idea of a real estate purchase, we don't want anybody else to know in case if the price gets jacked up as a result. We went back into formal session. The council voted four to nothing to authorize me and the city attorney to go ahead and start dealing on the nonpareil, see what kind of deal we could make. Off the top of my head, I'm remembering the main points was a purchase price of 975000 which resulted in a $57 a square foot cost. Single family residences today cost $150 a square foot. We hired a commercial company to go in and inspect. We got a report. Uh, we came up with the cost to uh, if we were going to move into that building, the cost to renovate it, we decided we didn't have the money to do it. We did lose $10,000 of the earnest money we put down. $10, and that was in my post. We've never made a secret of it. Looking back now, would you have done anything differently? Understand that the mayor has certain authorities, responsibilities, power, if you will. The city council has other authorities. 
city councils are basically a legislative function. The mayor, by state code and city code, is the city's chief executive. Much like Congress for the United States or our legislator, legislature in the state, they make laws. The president, the governor, the mayor enforce those regulations. If the council decides they want to evaluate purchase of property, then it's up to the mayor to figure out how to best work it and do it in compliance with laws and regulations. And that's what we did. We did not hide a single thing. Mr. Stewart, I'm sure that you've uh, studied the issue and know about it. Do you care to uh, provide an answer or share your thoughts for two minutes? Uh, yes, I do. I, I find it interesting we go down all of this data. Sure, the building out there at non Perel, you know, $57 a square foot, well, it, it was, it was, it's in bad shape. And then to compare with $150 a square foot and where we live in our homes, it, it's, it, wasn't, it wasn't done right. In my opinion, why did we lose $10,000? And the, the mayor admitted that. I'm grateful for that. But that's ridiculous. Whether they talked in executive session or I don't think they made everything public, in my opinion. That's what I've been told by many, many people. $10,000 is a lot of money. It's a sidewalk down there on Airport Road to connect to the park. And, and we need these kind of things. We don't need to throw our money away. I think we can be smarter. We can be wiser. Sure, it'd be nice to have a new building. But, but we're always, look at our families. Look at yourselves. We live kind of day to day, uh, paycheck to paycheck. And it's not comfortable to live like that. I've lived like that before. But that's what the city does. That's what a lot of cities do. That's what he mentioned Ammon. Yeah, that, that's what they're doing. Because when are they going to fund those streets that they just put in in new subdivisions when they come due? It's a liability, and you need to plan for it. Most cities in America don't. Salt Lake City does, and there's others. But we need to plan for things. I don't think we need a new city office, as beautiful as we can make it. I don't think we need a new city office. We can't afford it. How, how do I talk to people over on Lakeside and, and over on Wild Rose and tell them I can't do your streets because we're going to buy a new building? How do I do that? I can't. I promise you I won't. This question is for both of you. We'll start with you, Mr. Stewart. Utility expenses in the city rose as much as 15% last year. How do you plan to balance the infrastructure needs of the city while keeping taxes and fees to a minimum? That's a loaded question. I know I was gone for 20 years, <clears throat> and the price of water when I got here five years ago was astronomical. Um, we used to pay $30, $40 a, a month for water. I know that the mayor's got a, a new system for water meters, and they've done some, obviously they've done some work on how it's going to be cheaper to, to use the new meters. But my question is, is, is what, what can we do to save? I guess that's the question I was even asked. How come we can't go on a, on a uh, straight across the board water cost for everybody? I've thought about that. I don't know if that's a good idea, but I thought about it in, as a way to save money on utilities. And that's probably all I'm going to say about that. Mayor Carroll? SNA Engineers does an annual report. It's titled The Eastern Idaho Residential Water and Sewer User Rates and Connection Fees Summary. I invite anybody to go through this. You will see that the city of Blackfoot is in the low 10% of the 57 cities here. From connection fees to water and sewer to monthly fees for your sewer rate or water rate. Just take Shelley, for example. Shelley and Ammon are part of a 
sewer district called Irwa. If you connect into that system, it costs you $1,300 for the connection, which interestingly is the same fee the city of Blackfoot pays, but then you also pay a one-time fee of $5,995 to hook into sewer. And they're talking about raising that now. Now, I will say that the city of Blackfoot hired a company called FCS about four months ago to go completely through all of our utility fees. That's sanitation, water, sewer, and I wanted to look at storm sewer, but we decided to hold off on that. Mr. Stewart just said, said something about cities living paycheck to paycheck. That's part of the problem we have right now with the sewer and water infrastructure. We haven't been saving for the major rebuilds that we have to do right now. Thank you. We have about 800 feet of sewer line that have to be replaced on Ash Street. That's going to cost around $250,000. All right. Do you care to respond, Mr. Stewart? Yes. Yes, I'll say something about that. I'm glad that you brought that sewer line up, 800 feet. I am a in the neighborhood of, the, of that specific spot, and I have been watching the vacuum truck go over there daily, seven days a week. They spend two or three hours over there with a $700,000 truck. I realize it needs to be done. I'm not questioning that. But I might be old school, but I know previous mayors have done this. Why don't we just fix the problem right now since we don't have the money to do the whole thing? Thank you. All right, question for both of you. Mayor Carroll, we'll start with you. What is your experience running a large enterprise with million-dollar budgets? I retired from the INL in 2011 with almost 35 years of service. I was a manager there for about 32 of those 35 years. I had organizations from 10 people up to 340 people. Budgets of about 300,000 up to 27 million. I've been responsible for more than 2 million square feet of building space for sewer systems, for water systems, for fire departments, never had security. All of the crafts on site reported to me at one time, including Mr. Stewart. He was a bus driver in my fleet operation back in the early 90s. The depth of my range in management is very significant. When I had fleet operations, and this happened after Mr. Stewart moved to Utah, but we had a national reputation for alternate fuels and clean shop facilities. DEQ hired my organization to go in and train small shop owners all over the state. We had patents for converting light vehicles to natural gas for fuel. We had buses that operated on natural gas. We had the only over-the-road heavy equipment that operated on natural gas. We sent four buses to the Atlanta Olympics in 1996. I had contracts, international contracts, with England, Canada, and Uzbekistan. We had Tokyo sending people over to see how we did business. I've got a lot of experience. Mr. Stewart, your experience running large enterprises with million-dollar budgets? Okay, let's be, let's be clear. I, I do not have any experience running large enterprises with million-dollar budgets. I do have experience running businesses, especially one I'm going to talk about in Utah. I became a business owner 
and I got into the Home Depot stores with products. That wasn't an easy task. I was in all of the stores. So I had to deal with a lot of people, a lot of procurement, a lot of purchasing, a lot of transportation. That's what my education is as far as hundreds of thousands of dollars, not millions. Let me go back. The, the mayor mentioned all of the great things he did at the, at the INL. My hat goes off to you, mayor. But we're talking about the city. We're talking about what you've done here or what you haven't done. That's why I'm in the race. I'm not in the race to, to find out what you've done in the past. I'm not in the race to find out, you know, about bus operations after I left. I'm in the race to find out why things are not as good as they can be, why we don't do certain things, or why we, we say things that are not true. And, and, I, and if we're going to bring this up, if you want to bring it up, I'd be more than happy to. But we're not going to do sketchy things when I'm mayor. And those things have happened in the past. It's of record. We need to change some things. We don't need to know about, you know, all your, your wonderful things that you did at the site. I'm grateful for that you have. We need to know about what's going on now and what's going to happen in the future. That's why I'm running. Because I can change that. I'm sorry. Mayor, do you want to respond? It's interesting that Mr. Stewart brings up the word sketchy. He's referring to a meeting that happened at the county commissioners, one of our discussions to communicate. There was a recording of the meeting. The, the county attorney, Chase Hendricks, was discussing documents and used the term sketchy. Out of a two and a half hour meeting, there was a minute and 30 second clip that Mr. Stewart's cronies out in Groveland had been pushing and using the word sketchy. I said sketchy one time, echoing something that the county attorney had mentioned. And now they're saying everything I do is sketchy. That's very offensive. Everything we do is out in the open. We comply 100% with all the sunshine laws, and not because it's a law, because it's the right thing. Anybody who wants to come to my office, look at any of our planning reports, look at any of our documents, instead of going out and making up their own rumors, you're welcome to come and talk to me. Mayor, you mentioned the sunshine law. That kind of leads into our next question. We'll start with you, and I'd like a response from you, Mr. Stewart. Almost every politician claims they are transparent, that they will be transparent, that there'll be the open ad administration and books will be opened. How will you be transparent over the next four years with the public and communicate clearly what's happening in the city? Transparency is a word that sometimes gets overused. Transparency and communication are the same thing. To me, it's like having a pane of glass between you and me. We can see each other, but maybe we can't hear each other. We've got to find a way to be sure that we can communicate through whatever barrier is there. I've done a number of things. I've held town halls. We changed our website. We invested about $15,000 into it to make it more interactive. We invested about $25,000 to set up virtual meetings, thinking if people can't come to planning and zoning or city council, maybe they'd be willing to log into their computer and watch the proceedings there. I think the greatest number of people we've had joined virtually at a city council meeting was seven people. Sometimes we get 20 or 25 who attend because of a certain item on the agenda, which we post. We make sure we meet all of those regulations. I tried an open mic meeting inviting the community to come to city council chambers 
an hour before the city council meeting. First meeting, 15 people. Next meeting, 10 people. Next meeting, two. Next meeting, none. I continued <coughs> to occupy the room for the next three months. Nobody else came. We had good dialogue when people came, but I think the, curio the curiosity was over then. Anybody who wants to talk to me can talk to me, either by phone or come to the office. Thank you. M Mr. Stewart, two minutes. Yes, thank you. When he said anybody can come to the office, we were at a forum at the Senior Citizen Center. There was a lady there that had been trying to get a hold of the mayor for weeks. All she wanted to do is help the women's shelter. She was told by somebody in the city, I don't, it wasn't the mayor at the time, that she wanted, let me back up, she wanted to, to trade products, trade baby clothes, do things for the women's shelter. I don't know all the intricate parts of it, but all she wanted to do was help other people. And somebody from the city told her, it's against the ordinance to have it on our property or whatever the, whatever the reason was. She was pushed out. She was at this forum and she stood up and said, I've been trying to get a hold of you, Mayor, the last two weeks. Now, this blew me away. I am mortified that the door's not open. After I told her, you would be in my office in 48 hours. I promised that would happen. You're trying to help, whether it's against the ordinance or not. Communicate. Communication's everything. Communication's everything that we do. It's everything we do in the city. It's everything we do in our families. I'm going to have a line of communication where we can send email to you or we can print and post or, or give... Um, pamphlets or, or, or a piece of paper downstairs in the library where you can pick it up. But we can email you what we've done in the city last month, what we're going to do next month, so you will know. People don't come up to these, these meetings. I've been to them. There are families have too much going on. They just want to kind of know what's going on. And if they kind of know what's going on, they feel more comfortable, and then they might come and talk directly to the city. Mayor, do you want to take 30 seconds and respond? Oh, well, it'll take more than 30 seconds, but I will say that the lady that Mr. Stewart was referring to talked to me the morning of that forum as I was moving from one meeting to another one with the police department about a, a heinous crime that had just occurred. I was trying to talk to the lady. I got the information. She said that she wanted to hold this. She called it a swap meet. It wasn't until far into the conversation she even mentioned the crisis center. The city does have a policy about not having events like that on city property. We've found a way to get around it. I will admit I've not gotten back to her yet. I've had other things going on. But... We will be talking to her again. This will not happen till May 13th, which she did not mention even at the forum. Well, I have at least a dozen more questions, but we have been uh, discussing issues for the past hour, and we, we committed to keep this at an hour. So it is time for our closing statements. Both of the mayoral candidates have websites that you can go and interact with. Uh, they both said they're open to receiving emails and contact. So if you have your questions or your question was not asked, you can reach out to them directly and hopefully you'll re receive a, s a response that way. Uh, as I mentioned, each candidate has one minute for a closing statement. Mayor Carroll, you began the night with your opening statement. We'll have you go first with your closing statement. Thank you very much, Nate. Thank you to Bingham Healthcare. Thank you to East Idaho News. And thank you very much to EI Productions. It's been a pleasure to be a part of this. I just want people to vote. 1,566 people voted in the first election. If this follows with 
2017, we drop another 200 people. There's 5,000 registered voters in the city of Blackfoot. Please vote. Vote for either of us. Vote for who you think will do the best job. I've got the experience, I've got the momentum, and I've got 100% support with all the department heads. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. Thank you. Most of all, thank you, those listening, and I do hope you vote. Vote from your heart. Don't vote from your mind. Sometimes your heart tells you things your mind doesn't know. So think about that. Mayors can only do so much. The true test of a real leader, to me, is the ability to bring people together. Someone who shares credit with others instead of just for themselves. I believe that we can make a difference. I need your support. Grab a neighbor. That's an important thing. I, I agree with the mayor. I think that you need to go out and vote. Let's have more people vote. My name is Craig. My name is Craig. Action Stewart. Remember that. Stewart. Craig Action Stewart. Craig Action Stewart. I need your support Stewart. on November 3rd. So if you support me, I promise, I will give you my support. And I promise to do the right thing, to do the right thing for the right reason. Thank you. Craig Stewart and Mark Sturgeon and Phil Jenner and Matthew both very much, both very much for us. What for the election day is an election day is November. We want to thank the entire family for this forum, possible for it, alongside the production, i.e. productions and East Idaho News. If you missed any part of tonight, we will keep it archived on EastIdahoNews.com. You can go watch that. You can share it with your friends and your family members and spread the word. Thank you for watching. Have a good night.